Hello and welcome to Trust TV. I'm delighted to be joined today by our Chief Executive, Dr. Maria O'Kane. Maria, you're very welcome. Thank you, Riz. So we've just had our monthly Trust Board meeting where you presented an update on key issues and developments in the Trust. And you particularly highlighted, Maria, our Safe Timber campaign. Why is this so important for you? So safety has always been a key priority throughout our organisation. And we have many examples of award-winning practice, as we know. The annual September uh, event is an international campaign, which we know um, uh, helps raise awareness of safety and health and social care. And I'm delighted that we've been part of that this year. We had a wide range of experts on board to share learning. Uh, and we used a different theme each week. Uh, and particularly, we were interested in drawing awareness of the psychological safety of staff. Uh, we will soon be launching our new safety strategy, uh, which will build on the great work already in place, but will hopefully allow even greater support for our staff whenever they're thinking about safety and how to improve safety. We know that we have a lot of challenges in health at the, at the current time, but we also know that we have a responsibility to provide the best safe care that we can. My aim is that we continue to create a culture where we are safe, kind and excellent towards the people we look after and towards each other. And also at the meeting, Maria, we launched our inpatient dementia services public consultation. So how are we aiming to improve services for these very vulnerable patients? Well, I think in recent times, we have been increasingly made aware through um, media and other experiences of the vulnerability of older people and particularly when they have dementia and particularly for those frail elderly who can't represent themselves particularly well. So this model is particularly important. What we want to see is the creation of a specialist inpatient dementia unit within the Bluestone Mental Health Unit where we have the expertise uh, and we know that it's on the Craig Avon area site and will provide for the whole of the Southern Trust. As you know, we had a standalone inpatient dementia unit in Gillis in uh, St. Luke's. Um, in May this year, uh, the patients were relocated to Willows Ward, uh, and it's also within Bluestone, as an interim contingency arrangement to ensure patient safety and continuity of care, and to you know, ensure that we were providing for our patients in the best available environment with secured and dedicated uh, consultant psychiatric and uh, psychiatric nursing care. We've had significant uh, local and regional pressures in trying to recruit consultant psychiatrists, uh, particularly in old age psychiatry. Um, so this is what's driving the review in, in particular to help us reach a point where uh, we can understand throughout the course of the results of the consultation, you know, what really good care could look like and how we can use you know, the expertise of our staff to best advantage to provide safe and effective care and also to think about how you know, we provide a, a sustainable service that will be there for many years to come. We know that by 2032, the, tr the Southern Trust will have the highest number of individuals uh, in any, any area registered with dementia over the age of 65. I mean, that's a, a fairly staggering statistic. And we need to make these changes now uh, to make sure you know, that those of us who will need this service in the future, um, uh, and I count myself on that, uh, will have services like this available, providing the best possible care that we, we possibly can. Um, the, the importance of creating a specialist inpatient dementia unit co-located with mental health and disability inpatient services is that we can bring the expertise then of mental health and all the different disciplines uh, and user experience involved in that uh, and concentrate it uh, you know in an excellent center on one site but knowing that you know some of those staff in particular will work out across the community and carry that expertise and learning uh, you know throughout the southern trust so we really welcome the public's views on these proposals as we want to make these changes work uh, you know, uh, as soon as possible so that we have a really excellent, sustainable service over the next number of years. So the consultation, as we know, it opens on the 3rd of October uh, and closes on the 23rd of December 2022. And the consultation documents are available now on the Trust website. 
So we really are encouraging people to, to get in touch with us and tell us their views on these proposals. Now, also at the meeting, you highlighted the ongoing budget pressures and uncertainty and demand obviously continues to outstrip our resources. And of course, we're all worried at the moment about cost of living increases, be it fuel or energy. How is this all impacting on our services? So I, I think we all know uh, about the worries that we have about um, the economy currently. And we know the pressures that have been brought to bear on that in relation to uh, the impact of the, the war in Ukraine um, uh, and other factors that have uh, driven up inflation uh, and made uh, energy and food in particular expensive. As a result of that, and as a result of uh, the below inflation pay increases that there have been in recent years, um, and aside from other pay pressures, we know that the Department of Health has announced that there's around a 400 million pound deficit regionally in the coming financial year in relation to health. Uh, we know that uh, that's realised in our own budget because of significant increases, for example, in the cost of energy. Um, and we also know that alongside all of that, there will be at least £80 million needed to tackle the huge waiting lists. We have some of the worst waiting lists in the world in relation to health. Uh, and, you know, there has never been a more urgent time to try and resolve all of this. Uh, the health minister said... Uh, if, if more was not found, he might have to scrap the pay settlement, freeze recruitment and stop some clinical activity. And certainly that's a very bleak picture for us to be thinking about. And it's extremely worrying, I think, in the context of all of the other issues that people are having to deal with at the minute in relation to their own personal finance uh, and the, the cost of living currently. And I suppose we're particularly worried because we know that particularly for people who live in social deprivation or are low income. These are really huge challenges. Uh, and we also know that they're linked to health. And we are concerned about the impact of all of this, you know, on, uh, on our service users and our own health um, uh, as a result of a lot of these very uh, bleak uh, financial demands. So I know that despite all of that, um, we have a very robust and optimistic workforce. You know, I've, I've watched the resilience of people throughout COVID and how much energy and optimism they've brought to all of that. And I know that despite the challenges, we will still uh, continue to do our best and still strive to provide safe and excellent care every day. Dr. Maria O'Kane, thank you very much. Thank you, Ruth.